Hello and welcome to the Categorically Romance podcast. I'm Aaron and joining me today is a returning guest. We have author Aisha Weedlin with us today. Thank you so much for joining us again. How has your 2022 treated you so far? Thank you so much for having me back. It's um, it's really cool to like be back here for a second time. That still seems so weird to say, but it's really, it's really cool to be back. Um, the year has been a little nuts. Um, it started nice and quiet and slow, and then my son graduated eighth grade, and then in July, it's just been nonstop ever since. So yeah, it's been busy. Busy is is the name of the game for 2022 so far for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It seems like <laughs> we, we came out of the uh, the pandemic and just a, a big rush to catch up with everything. Yeah, it's uh, well, he started high school. So he's a freshman. And then so I have a freshman and I have a sixth grader. So it is just it's insanity. <laughs> Every day is just nonstop something new, something I'm in this, I got I signed up for this, this is happening. And then he just finished uh homecoming, his first homecoming weekend. Aww. So it's yeah, it's uh and and, and next weekend something else. It's just nonstop. It's nonstop, yeah. it's nonstop. <laughs> so, so you've got them starting in new schools at the same year. So so sixth yeah. grade and high school at the at the same time, huh? Well, so my daughter is still, this is her last year at her elementary. So the junior high is just seventh and eighth. So this is her last year, but everything oh, okay. is a big deal because it's her, it's her last first day of school at this school. It's her last Halloween. So it's, everything is, you know, significant. So I got a new and a, and a last. So it's a lot of emotions, <laughs> a lot of feelings, a lot of things in my house. And I'm, you know trying to promote my second book so it's uh it's crazy 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 well we're glad that you took the time to talk with us again today so are you ready to get into some holiday themed icebreakers yes please bring them on all right what is one of your favorite holiday films uh, my favorite holiday film would have to be uh, family stone um <laughs> I love that movie. I watch it whenever it's on. We owned a copy of the DVD, but now we don't have a DVD player, but I still have a copy of the movie. So, <laughs> uh, so that that's one of my favorite movies. And in this book, there is a scene in the book where she finds a movie on TV to watch that. And, and that's totally the movie that she's watching. So I, lo I love that movie. I actually thought about that because you never actually <laughs> titled any of the movies in there. And I, I'm like, I wonder what movie she's, yeah. she's thinking of when she's yep. writing this. <laughs> that's it. Well, tell us about a cherished family holiday tradition from your childhood. Okay, so there, there's two. So the first one is, um, I grew up in Michigan, Detroit, specifically. So um, every Thanksgiving morning, we would go to the Thanksgiving Day Parade that would go down um, Woodward Avenue. And we did that every single Thanksgiving morning for many, 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 many years, probably until I was like in 10th grade. Um, so lots of memories, lots of very cold mornings of getting bundled up. It was in Michigan. So, you know, every Thanksgiving morning was freezing mm -hmm. cold, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And then the second thing is just Christmas. So my mom was like the, the big cook in my family. So everybody came to my house for Christmas when I was growing up. So she, she cooked a huge dinner and she baked I don't know how many different kinds of cookies. Um, so, and so my bro, I have two older brothers. So my brothers and I, she would like line the, um, the cookie containers with aluminum foil. And then she would put the cookies in and then she would put like a cover of aluminum foil over the, the cookie container and then put the lid on. So we would like sneak and try to steal the cookies out when we had to like 
fold the aluminum foil a certain way so you wouldn't realize you were stealing the cookie. So that is something that I vividly remember doing with my brothers, but then just, you know, the family coming over um, to our house every Christmas for dinner. So we would have tons of people in my house, lots of good food, lots of sweets and cookies and a lot of loud laughter. And I, I, I have a lot of good memories with that. Yeah, that's that's great. Uh, having the family come to you on Christmas. That's got to mm-hmm. be a lot of fun. Uh, take out the, you know, stressful travel and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, when do you prefer to begin your holiday shopping? So I'm a terrible uh, <laughs> holiday shopper. I am a very last minute, like Christmas Eve shopper. Like I that week leading up to Christmas is typically when I do my shopping. Occasionally, if I am shopping for like my kids, you know, if it's like for video games, I try to do like, oh, it's on sale for Black Friday. Let me get it because it's like a really good deal on a game. But mm-hmm. most likely I am shopping up until like the mall closes on Christmas Eve. It's very bad. I'm a very, very bad last minute shopper. It's kind of entertaining at the same time. Like it's a little stressful, but it's also very fun to be in the mall around that time because everybody's uh-huh. like a little nuts. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's kind of like an, an opposite crazy of Black Friday is now, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's super, it's fun and a little chaotic, but uh, I, I definitely am a last minute shopper. When do you do your shopping? You know, I am so bad at shopping for other people. I Mm. will usually just get gift cards and things like that. And Mm. it's so funny, too, because my my one sibling, their children are just a couple years younger than my own. But I'll still find Mm -hmm. myself going, well, what's a seven-year-old want? (laughs) I've already forgotten if I even figured it out when my own kids were seven. Right. It's funny. Yeah, I... I don't know. And I, I try to plan. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'll you know, I'll just get it on Amazon. But sometimes like the kids are getting a little particular about specific things. So I have to go to the mall to get certain things. And I just wait. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I got to go get that that thing they wanted. And it's like the 22nd of December. Oh, man, I got to go get it. <laughs> so yeah. I just... <laughs> I'm like, oh, I gotta get some. Oh, I gotta, I gotta get some for my husband. It's just, um, yeah, I'm very bad. I'm very bad. At, I'm a good gift giver, but I'm a last minute shopper. Well, it sounds like it pays off in the end. Yeah, though, so with that being the good gift giver, so that's that's <laughs> I great. Try, I try to listen throughout the year for clues. Well, you're back with us today to talk about. Maybe This Christmas, Mm -hmm. book number two in your Romancing the Doctors series. Congratulations on the new book. Can you please share with us the elevator pitch for the book? Oh, dear. Not the elevator pitch. Oh, man. Um, (laughs) These are always so hard. Uh, Okay. I will do my best. Okay. So Maybe This Christmas is about the two best friends from the first book. Um, There you are, Angela Miles and Dr. Sean. Atkins. Um, she's working with a children's hospital to raise money for families through her nonprofit. And Sean is going to be her liaison for the hospital. And um, they discover that they share a pretty deep commonality in their past. And once they discover that, they need to decide if they can overcome the pain of those past experiences and have a future together. Does that cover it? Oh, that sounds <laughs> perfect. That's okay, better great. than anything I could have. I, I probably would have given everything away. <laughs> <Exactly>. if <I'd... laughs> those are always so hard because I, I, oh, those are so hard for me. So surprise question here, but where did the inspiration for this book come from? Oh, man. So so this is actually kind of funny. So um, when I wrote There You Are, I was um, emailing back and forth with my editor, the wonderful Julie Sturgeon with Thule. One of her emails said, hey, um, have you ever thought about writing a holiday book? And I was, you know, when I wrote There You Are, I'm like, oh, I have this this story I want to write. And, you know, I I pitched it and Thule took it. And I was like, all right, great. I I wrote a book. Awesome. I'd never had like a second story in my head. So 
when she asked me that, I was like, yeah, sure. I totally, I can do that. No, no biggie. <laughs> Just say yes first, right? <laughs> right. So I'm like, yeah, I can do it. Totally, I can do it. So I, I wrote like this, uh, this outline and I sent it to her and she was like, okay, yeah, it looks like you got a good idea. Um, and so that that's how that came about. It was very much a spur of the moment uh, idea that kind of got put into my head by my editor because I had not even considered a second book, uh, like a part two in, uh, from There You Are. I didn't have a series, so this was very much out of the blue. <laughs> it wasn't something that was planned. Yeah. So how how did you um, how did you come to the decision to use um, Angela and Sean for this? Oh, because I just love them so much. Um, when I was writing the first book, they both just had like hilarious things that they would say in the first book. So their personalities, but there was always something there like there there were things that you know would be brought up about Angela in the first book that I thought oh that would be fun to kind of figure out how that how did that happen how did she get to where she is now and Sean is just such a kind of a lovable jerk but how did he get to be this jerk so um I thought kind of diving into discovering why they are the way that they are would be a good thing to figure out. So I, and I just, I just love them. Yes. Well, we're so glad that, that they got <laughs> their own book to star in. Well, the story starts with the wedding of Amina and Nathan, our main characters mm -hmm. from the first book in the series. Mm -hmm. As a reader, we love seeing uh, the callback to former characters. It's always so fun. And weddings are just so wonderful. And mm -hmm. we got both of those right at the beginning of this book. Yeah. So what is it you think it is about weddings that makes such a great start to a romance novel? Um, I think because, I mean, number one, it's always the scene, the environment is always just such a romantic place to begin. So that's always a good starting point. So I think weddings can either have, you know, one of two effects on people. They can either love them or they absolutely hate being there. So you can meet someone that shares that same feeling as you do. I think too, you feel a little looser at weddings, you know, the alcohol's flowing a little freer. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're a little more uninhibited a little bit. You're a little looser. So I definitely think that it's just uh, everybody looks great. Everybody's relaxed. Everybody's having a good time. So I think it's just you can really let your hair down in a way that you're not really able to do in a different type of environment. Like in a bar, if you go out to a bar to meet someone, you're sort of buttoned up. You know, you want to put on your, your first best first impression, you know, but I think at a wedding, everybody already looks great. And you just kind of feel it's a different vibe at a wedding, you just feel a little freer. So I think that's always a good starting point to meet somebody. Well, maybe this Christmas is obviously a holiday romance. Mm -hmm. And with romance stories alone, <laughs> there are challenges in balancing all of the mm -hmm. elements involved. When we have a holiday romance, there's a mm -hmm. whole nother element thrown in there. So how do you strike the balance? Oh, uh, so I remember when I initially pitched the story. So I had wrote like, you know, the first draft and um, Jane, Jane Porter over at Toon Lee, um, she asked me a quick question and she said, okay, this is great, but what does Angela do? <laughs> what, <laughs> what does she do? And I'm like, wait, I didn't, I didn't say that. Like I didn't write that. And she, she said, what does she do? Like, what is driving her? What is pushing her? You need to figure that out. And I was like, oh, okay. So once I figured that out, once I figured out what does Angela do? And um, once I figured that out, okay, she said, all right, well, what are the stakes in the story? What are the priorities? You know, she kept asking me all these little 
questions to sort of help me hone in to like what is going to push the story forward because I kept thinking holiday story I need to have it has to be Christmassy everything has to be you know have something to do with Christmas 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 and um once I took that out a little bit the holiday became the background and not the front and that was a huge help because I was so focused uh, because remember this wasn't something that I had you know originally planned to write so for me I my mind was thinking oh the the holiday has to be in the front of the story when it didn't need to be it could play the background it could be oh there's Christmas lights in in the room or in the restaurant and it doesn't have to be this a big extravagant thing and then once I figured that out it helped tremendously the story needed to be about Angela not the holiday. So that (laughs) once I got that together, then I was good to go. Then I was able to to write the story. Well, I think you did a great job. Uh, Bree and I, we talk sometimes about how we get these holiday themed stories and and sometimes we feel uh, not cheated uh, or anything, but it's just we feel like there could have been a little a little more holiday in there. Mm -hmm. Um, And this story definitely had the whole whole winter holiday feeling and 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 season just just there with you the whole time but like you said not overpowering it as well yeah and I think that that's what I wanted to do because I felt like this Angela story and Sean's story there was so much in there that you know they that alone could carry the book and then we could just have all the other little stuff play the background um and i and i needed help with that like i i didn't just have that revelation on my own like i really you know owe a tremendous debt to jane you know for sort of helping me realize you know you don't you have to figure out what your character wants what are her priorities what she's trying to do where she's trying to go what matters to her um what's pushing her what what is Sean's deal like? What what's pushing him? What's driving him? So I think that was huge. That was really really huge. Um, and then you know just uh, trying to keep the regular beats of a, a romance novel too. So um, it was hard. It was it was more challenging too because it is you do have to sort of hit those those holiday beats. You know, you got to get the warm and holiday fuzzy. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and how cool is that, too, that you got the founder of Thule Publishing, you know, coaching you along um, yeah. writing this book? Yeah. She's so, they are just amazing, amazing over there and how they, they want you to do well. They want you to put your best foot forward and they believe in you, what you can do, but they're willing to like take a minute to help you out when you need it. Like there, I can email them and say, Hey, I, I need help, 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 you know, and they'll, they'll help. (laughs) And that's, that's awesome. It's awesome to have a publisher like that. So very lucky. Well, I want to talk about this one scene. I really enjoyed the ice skating scene. Oh, that's my favorite. (laughs) I I love that, that Sean was the unsure one in the situation. Like he was, he wasn't in his comfort zone. Angela was pushing him out of that. And he was literally having to lean on her during, during this event. So how did, how did that scene come to you? Oh my gosh. Uh, I, that is my, my fate. I had so much fun writing that. So, and first off, because, um, Chicago during Christmas time is just so beautiful. It's so just, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And, um, Millennium Park is one of my favorite places to be in the city during Christmas time. There's many others, but that one particular place is just really pretty. So I wanted to include that particular spot in the city. So, um, so I knew once, once I made the decision of, okay, I'm going to put this ice skating rink in this book. All right. Now I'm going to make him very uncomfortable. So he's always so sure of himself, so steady, so confident, 
you know, and you feel it when you walk in a room, you feel how he commands the space in a room because, you know, he's handsome and he's so smart and all these things. So it was a fun thing to make him incredibly uncomfortable, nearly frightened, very afraid to just (laughs) do something, very afraid to, you know, because obviously him being just so cool, cool, calm, collected all the time, he doesn't want to make a fool out of himself in front of this beautiful woman, number one. And then he's like, you know, I am going to hurt myself. (laughs) I'm going to (laughs) hurt. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to hurt myself. But it also made him have to be vulnerable. He had to put the guard down. He had to trust someone else. And I think by making him vulnerable, it sort of opened, it cracked the door to having him want to expose more about himself down the line in the book. And I don't think that that would have happened without him being vulnerable in this situation first. So, and then it was just, it was just very fun to just write him just being petrified. (laughs) Well, I can definitely identify with that because I've (laughs) I've gone ice skating once in my life and it, yeah, I I don't think I was away from the wall once during. <laughs> I was, no, <laughs> I had so much confidence going in because I was like, oh yeah, I've rollerblade all the time. I've got this. Oh. Like, no, 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 you don't. Oh my gosh! So the how she's teaching him is how. So my daughter uh, played hockey, um, and she started. She started when she was five. Oh wow! And how they taught her to ice skate was how Angela is teaching him in the book is to march in place. That was how they were teaching her. Like you have to march around the ice. Um, Cause I think it's just getting used to lifting one foot up and putting it down and, and studying yourself each time you do it. Um, so that's how I, I watched her and I had that memory of her learning how to ice skate. Is something that I remember to put that in the book. So, but that that was just so much fun to write because it was he's this big guy and he's just so confident all the time. And it was just fun to just kind of rip all of that away for a little bit oh, and yeah. make him uncomfortable, make him have to lean on this beautiful woman for a little bit. Well, you touched on something else there, which I really loved about this book, and that was it being set in Chicago. Chicago mm-hmm. is just one of my favorite cities. I, I can't get there enough. And I just love it every time I go there because it it is, it's just, it's such a beautiful city. Yeah, just, it really is. I mean, the, the skyline to just mm-hmm. like the architecture when you're walking just on the street yep. level and everything yep. and the parks and stuff. It is. It's just such, um, I think the thing that I love about it here, it is the parks. It's just, there's so many parks and they're all beautiful and um and it's any season like the the summer it's beautiful downtown in the city the winter it's cold but it's pretty <laughs> it's, yeah <laughs> it's uh it's it's it is a beautiful city i mean i'm in the suburbs but and you know whenever we go down you know my daughter's always like why don't we come here more often we need to come here more often cuz it's so pretty here i love it here I'm like, you know, we should be down here more often. When I first moved here, um, I went to school in a city. So I was down there more frequently and I would, you know, walk around a lot. And I was just blown away. Every time I discovered a new little spot in the city, I would make a little mental note like, oh, I'm going to come back here again. It's just, I love it here. It's great. And and the pizza. Oh, my God. It's yeah. It's so good. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the tourist in me. <laughs> well, loss is something that both our main characters are dealing with in this story. How mm-hmm. did you make the decision to have this be a significant part of both Angela and Sean's history? Mm, OK, um, that's a really good question. So. It's very brief, but in um, in the first book, in There You Are, um, Amina is talking about Angela and she references um, her being a widow. And it's something that I wrote down in a notebook that I said, if I ever wrote another book, I would probably want to talk about that. What happened? And 
when you know, I got approached to write a second book. I was like, oh, there it is right there. I'm going to talk about that. So it's such a significant part of her life and something that drives her and pushes her and and her relationship with her son. So it felt like a, a good starting point for her. And also, Sean, we don't know what, what motivates him, what pushes him. He's so successful as a pediatric surgeon but we don't know what has what what has been the driving force that has been pushing him why is he single what what is going on there why is he the way that he is is he all bad he can't be all bad he can't be you know there has to be something else there beneath the surface with this guy so i think sort of pulling back peeling back the layers on on each of them And finding some common ground, the sad common ground, but finding that common ground, I think was um, just really compelling. It was difficult to write, but I think it was really, really cool to find this deep, painful story behind the both of them that has been driving their success, driving and pushing them further down the line in life. Um, And then they find each other, but it's like, oh no, what? That happened to you too. So it's, I thought it was a good, good, good sort of thing that they found in each other, but also kind of a wedge between them two. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I, I just thought that there was so much more to them that we needed to find out. And her, that that little brief mention of her being a widow in the first book was sort of the catalyst for everything else. So you had not uh, flushed out Sean's section of that or or no. had, had any inkling of it in the back of your mind? No, no. I think that just sort of came in the creative process of the story of just trying to discover what is driving him so much because he works so hard. He's he's young you know why is he on the board so fast like why is he in a medical what is what's up with this guy you know I just there had to be something more to him so I had to figure out what it was and then once I sort of had that oh this is what it is moment without spoiling anything um I think that that it felt really good to discover that about him but also sad I felt really sad for him Mm -hmm. at the same time but then I also felt sad for Angela. And I was like, oh, what are the odds that these two people that didn't like each other, like each other, but man, what a heck of a monkey wrench to throw at them that, that they have this this thing in common. What a thing to have in common. And tell us a bit about the parallel characters. So, so the family members of each main character you had, they each had a very significant role, I feel like, too, in kind of giving our, our main characters a, a, a proper proper nudge or, or maybe a reality check uh, on things. So um, Angela's son and Sean's mother are mm-hmm. um, big forces in this story. Yeah. Um, so Angela's son, David, is um, that that's her everything. So she you know she had this this one thing pushing her i think that you know got her to where she is now but then she has her son that sort of keep keeps her going that is but also is sort of i guess putting a check on her too like hey you got to live life a little more, or, you know, just slow down a little bit. Or, you know, he, I think that he's, he gives her uh, a little bit of relief to sort of, you know, take back. But I think that Sean gives her that too, a little bit. And I think that for Sean, his mom is the ultimate, you know, you need to get your head out of your butt. Yeah. <laughs> mom. <laughs> Um, she is just so, you know, she's proud of her son, but she's not that impressed by her son because that's her son. You know, she wants him to be happy and she wants him to live life more to the fullest and not be so consumed, even though she knows what's driving him. She wants him to have that driving, but not let it 
consume him and you know she worries about him and she wants him to 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 live his life a little bit more fully and completely and you know she recognizes things a little more a little faster than he can recognize them and Mm -hmm. I think that they are the perfect balance to the main characters you know they're very loving and David, even though he's a teenager, he is just so sweet and he loves his mom to death. And even though, you know, Sean's mom has experienced an immense loss, you know, she has still found a way to live life and to enjoy life. And she wants her son to to find that, you know, so they ground them. David grounds his mom and Sean's mom grounds him. So it's they're they're lovely they're yeah. lovely <laughs> yeah they are i think probably one of my my favorite moments in the book is when sean's mother just kind of gives him an are you kidding me talk like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it, yeah it like, was, are you really like what are yeah. you blind like what is going on <laughs> yeah It was sad, but it was also, you know, a very, just a a check on what are you even thinking, you know, and and touching as well. So it was, it it struck a really good balance that scene. I loved it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. (laughs) Well, this being an episode about a holiday book, I've asked if you could come with some recommendations for our listeners of any other holiday reads that you love. Sure. So the first two are from Denise Wheatley, fellow mm-hmm. Tunley author. Um, Love at the Icicle Cafe and Christmas in Full Bloom are both very good books. And um, Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey, which I stayed up way too late reading that book. <laughs> oh, oh, it's an up all night book. Oh. oh, my God. I could not stop reading that book. I couldn't put it down. It was very, very good. Yeah. So those, I would recommend all of them. Um, They're very, all three are very, very sweet. Very, very sweet and cozy reads. So, but very good. Very, very good. Yes. I'll have to check those out, especially Denise's. I, I, for some reason, I've only read her scary thriller books. (laughs) Oh, you have to read her other ones. (laughs) There's such Yes, yes, read the other ones too. It's good to get to like the full picture of a writer when you know that they write these like, you know, suspense kind of books. Mm-hmm. And then you read these warm, loving Christmas books. Yeah. So. All right. Well, they're on the to read for this holiday season for sure. Well, getting into some round outs. What's mm-hmm. a romance you've read within the past few years that reminded you of why you love the genre? Okay, so the whole Brown Sister series by Talia Hibbert. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh my God, I love those books so much. Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Take a Hint, Danny Brown. After Age, Eve Brown. I loved those books so much. I think I read read one of them twice. I read Act Your Age, Eve Brown twice. Um, That one was my favorite. That those books are like, oh, I love these. I love these are why I love romance books. <laughs> just they were just so good. It's so fun to read. So good. Well, I, I feel like you're calling me out here because those are more books on my my to be read pile. Oh my I god, you haven't read yet. those? <laughs> I haven't yet, but I'll definitely Oh, oh my god, you, you have to, to read them. those. They're so good. Well, what is one of your favorite romance tropes to read? Oh, I'm definitely a enemies to lovers reader. I love those. I love the revelation of, oh, no, but I love him. I hate him, but I love him. I love that discovery, the light bulb moment and the giving in to the feeling of, you know, the overwhelming attraction of this person I, I hate. Oh, my gosh. I, I just love those. That's my favorite. Oh yeah, there. Oh, I love it too because it's just you know what's going to happen, but mm-hmm. but it's just it's always such a fun payoff and just such a journey, such a fun journey yeah. along the way, getting to getting to those great yeah. moments, those key moments. And there's usually always something really funny that happens too along the way. So mm-hmm. 
yeah, those are my favorite. What is one book you wish you could read again for the first time? So they both are by Alyssa Cole. Um, A Duke by Default. Um, I just finished like probably about a month and a half ago. And um, Prints on Paper. Um, Both of them are enemies to lovers stories. And I was just, I was locked in. They're very good. She's great. She's a really good writer. Um, but those are good. Have you read any of her books? <laughs> more more on my to be read. <laughs> uh, just, I'm yeah, giving, I, you, giving you a lot of good information here today. Yes, yes. I, I appreciate it. Though, but still, I'm feeling called out here. <laughs> you, you're getting some good ones to add to your list. Yes, absolutely. Oh, awesome. there anything you have upcoming that you can share with our listeners? Well, um, there's going to be a audio book for There You Are coming soon. Oh. Um, so I just got the the little sample of the, uh, the, the narrator. Um, so that was really cool, but also a little weird. Uh, <laughs> a little strange, um, but very, very cool. Um, so I, I, that's going to be coming. I don't know exactly when the audio book will be like out to the public, but, um, that is something that's going to be coming soon. Um, maybe this Christmas is coming out on October 25th. And, um, beyond that, uh, I, I don't really have anything, you know, down the pike here, down, down the road. I'm sort of taking a little bit of a break from writing. Um, my brain has just not been able to, to, to get a story together, but I'm hoping that a little bit of time away and not so much pressure on myself, something good will come out of it. Yeah. Because it's not. It's not something you can really force, I, I don't think, I, I'd imagine. No, and I think I had been forcing it a little bit and nothing good was coming out of that. So <laughs> I think I just have got to just, you know, take take my time, take my time and uh, try to come up with something really good, some good characters that people can enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Well, we look forward to everything that you've got coming. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, lastly, where can everyone follow you online? Oh, man. Um, it's first name Aisha, last name Weedland, and I am on all the socials. Um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I have a TikTok. I don't use it that much. <laughs> so I'm really sorry if people are following me on TikTok and- <laughs> The last post was like from two months ago. I'm going to try to do better at that. But mostly I'm on, I'm on Facebook, but I am really on Instagram and Twitter. I'm on Twitter more than anything, but um, I'm on all those. So you can just find me there. Well, listeners, check the show notes. You can find all the places that you can find Aisha online that she just mentioned. And make sure to pre-order Maybe this Christmas. Uh, it was October 25th. Yes, it releases October 25th. Um, you can pre order the ebook um, now and the paperback on barnesandnoble.com. Well, listeners, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in another episode. And until then, have a good night.